This is the first video of Module 5. In this video, we're going to introduce the concept of a small world network. We'll define the two properties that a small world network has. One of these is the clustering coefficient. So we will define the clustering coefficient of a node and then use this to define the clustering coefficient of a network. Watts and Strogatz in 1998 wrote what is now a very well-known paper that introduced the formal definition of a small world network. In particular, they defined two quantities of a network, the average path length and the clustering coefficient. And they said graphs that have a short average path length and have a high clustering coefficient are what we will call small world. So what we want to do is to measure to what extent a node is in a cluster. And recall that a cluster is a dense subgraph. And to clarify what we mean by dense, we mean dense in the sense of how many edges are present. Of course, if there are k nodes, then k to choose 2 would be the maximum. So how many edges are present or induced with respect to the total number possible will give us a measure of how dense the subgraph is. So let us suppose that a given node u is of degree k. And so we're looking at its neighborhood of size k. And let's further suppose that its neighborhood induces a subgraph with m edges. So to determine the clustering coefficient of a node, we want to look at the ratio of the number of edges induced by that node's neighborhood over the total possible number of edges that could be in that neighborhood. So we can represent that, since we said there are m edges in the neighborhood, we could represent that as m over k choose 2, which reduces to 2m over k times k minus 1. Now this is similar to what is in the book, but the expression does not have m. Instead, it has the number of triangles. Now why the number of triangles? We're counting the edges in the neighborhood. But if you include the note u, then every time you have an edge in the neighborhood, you induce a triangle. So it's really the same count. The number of triangles where u is one of the vertices is the same as counting the number of edges in the neighborhood. So the result that we obtained is the same as the equation in your text on page 82. That is, the clustering coefficient of node i is the ratio of 2 times the cardinality of c sub 3i, which is the number of triangles induced by the neighborhood of node i, or c sub 3 representing a cycle of length 3. So it's the ratio of that over k sub i, which is the degree of node i, times k sub i minus 1. So this is the equation labeled 4.29. Now that's the clustering coefficient of each node. So to determine the clustering coefficient of the entire network, we find a straight average. 
if there are n nodes, then we sum, add up all the clustering coefficients, and divide by n. And this is the equation in the text. It's labeled equation 4.30. There's an alternative definition for the clustering coefficient of a node. The reason that we want an alternative definition is because oftentimes you lose information about the distribution when you take a straight average. So this alternative definition does not use the average. Instead, it defines the clustering coefficient of a network as the ratio of 3 times the number of triangles to the number of paths linked to. That is, it's 3 times the cardinality of C sub 3, the total number of triangles in the network, over the total number of paths of link 2. Now, where is the 3 in the numerator coming from? We're really looking to count the number of paths that occur in a triangle with respect to all of the paths of link 2. So how many paths of link 2 can you find in a triangle? And that would be 3 choose 2, or there are 3 distinct paths in a triangle of link 2. So here's an example. This is a Network if in your text on page 83. And let's determine C bar, the clustering coefficient that uses the average, by finding the clustering coefficient of each node. Notice that there are two nodes that are of degree n minus 1, and the remaining n minus 2 nodes of degree 2. The nodes of degree 2, having just two nodes in their neighborhood, there is an edge. And there's a most possible one edge. So all of the nodes of degree 2 have clustering coefficient 1. The total number of edges in their neighborhood over the total number possible is 1 over 1. So now, what is the clustering coefficient of the nodes of degree n minus 1? Let's look at the n minus 1 nodes in the neighborhood of one of these nodes. The n minus 2 nodes are not connected to each other. Therefore, the only edges we pick up are from a node that is connected to each of them. So there should be n minus 2 edges in the neighborhood of the node of degree n minus 1. So the ratio is n minus 2 over its degree, which is n minus 1 choose 2. Since there are two nodes that have this clustering coefficient, namely n minus 2 over n minus 1 choose 2, when we find the sum of all the clustering coefficients, the sum of the clustering coefficients of all of the nodes, we'll have two that contribute this much to the sum. We'll also have n minus 2 nodes that contribute 1 to the sum. So the sum can be represented in two parts. The sum can be represented as the total for the two nodes of high degree plus the total for the n minus 2 nodes of degree 2. This leads us to the expression or the result that's given on page 83, which is equation 4.33. Now, 
the clustering coefficient that does not use the average, but rather uses the number of triangles, is um, a problem that's going to be on your homework. So in conclusion, you heard my silly cat in the background. And you were also introduced to the concept of the small world network. And we